In this tutorial, we'll be discussing chordal analysis. Uh, we'll be putting into practice um, the nomenclature, the symbols that you were taught in the reading for this chapter. The symbols that we're going to create are going to convey those three pieces of information. They'll show a root scale degree by um, using a Roman numeral. They'll indicate the quality of the chord by capitalizing the Roman numeral. And they'll indicate the inversional information uh, by that shorthand in which uh, a blank entity, uh, if there's no extra information beyond the Roman numeral, um, that means it's in root position. And if the little six appears, it means that we're dealing with a first inversion chord. So here's a sample of what the symbols that we will be creating will look like. Um, in G major, we see that we have a, um, the first of those chords indicated is a four chord. Um, that would be a, a scale degree four chord, um, a C chord in the key of G. Um, by the fact that it's big, we can tell that it's a major triad, and that's quite expected for the key of G major, C major triad. And the last addition of the six indicates that this C chord will not actually have a C as its lowest note. It'll have uh, an E as the bass note. Um, moving to the middle chord, um, in G major again, this is indicating uh, a chord built on scale degree three or a B chord. Um, the lower case of it indicates that it is in minor, so it's a B minor triad, again, which is completely fit, uh, a completely good fit to the key of G major. And the fact that no extra information is there means that it's simply a B triad in root position. Um, this last chord is indicating an A chord of some type in G major. It's indicating it's diminished, which would have to happen through the use of um, an accidental or two. We won't actually create this chord. And it's indicating that this A chord is um, in inversion, so that the A is not actually appearing at the lowest note. Um, a different note will appear in the bass. To put this in practice, we'll consider briefly the long way to create a Roman numeral, and then we'll figure out a uh, much faster method. So what we're looking at is the minuet by Beethoven from your reading. Um, it's been reprinted here. It sounds something like this. Now, the first thing we'd want to do is we'd want to establish the key of this piece um, based on the key signature of two sharps. The good, two good guesses are D major or B minor. It sounds quite optimistic and happy. And it has a lot of activity in the bass line that has Ds and As and Ds. So it really is in D major. And the next thing we'd want to do really quickly is to move through it, establishing uh, the roots of the uh, chords. So it starts on a D chord, as we said. Um, if the piece is in D major, we would expect a lot of D and A chords, um, a lot of one and five. That's how you establish a key. Um, in your readings, some of the non-chord tones are marked with circles. And in this example, they're not, but we'll be able to manage. Um, moving to the second chord, um, the downbeat of it has A's and a D in the top voice. It's quite a beautiful um, note, but it's actually not part of the chord. The first um, note of, that of the second measure is not a full A triad, but by the time the C sharp comes in, it's pretty clearly establishing an A chord. If we look at the third measure, it moves back to a D in the bass, and our default suspicion is that it's supporting a root position triad, a D F sharp A chord. That's correct, that's what's there. Um, if you look to the next measure, um, the bass doesn't change at all, so no need to put the bass and the chord content doesn't change at all. It's still a D chord into the next measure, so we won't give any new information. We'll continue on to measure five, where the bass really does change to a new chord. And the downbeat again is um, an A, C sharp, E chord, an A chord there. At the end of that measure, um, it's still A's and C sharps. Nothing has changed. So we can skip to the next downbeat. And here we have this luscious... That's what happens to the downbeat of the next measure. Um, we're expecting probably a D sonority based on a D in the bass. Um, the G is not part of the chord. That circles the non-chord tone in your book, and indeed it's a D chord. We have one last chord that we've not heard yet. This is the last chord, uh, this is the second to last chord of the entire example. And that is based on an E. Uh, we ask ourselves, is that an EGB chord? Um, and it is. It, based on that bass note E, we can simply say, yes, it's an E chord. And then moving to the last chord, we can say, ah, it's a 
A, A, C sharp E chord, it is an A triad. So the bass is A and it's an A chord. And in fact, all of these chords are in root position. So given that information, the long way to create a Roman numeral analysis would be to go through, like your exercises are asking you to do, and assemble those three pieces of information to take the first chord and ask, what scale degree is the root? What's the quality of the chord? And is it in root position or first inversion? So in this case, we would say that D is scale degree one in D major, that the D chord is major. We do that either by, by our eyes or by our ears and say, yes, it's a major chord. And we say, yes, it's in root position because this D chord has a D in the bass. Going to the next chord, we can do the same procedure. We would translate the root A into scale degree five, say that the A chord is expected to be, um, that the scale degree five chord is expected to be major in, the key, in, a, in a major key like D. And again, A is the root and A is in the bass line. So again, we know that this is a root position chord. And moving really quickly to the edge of the example, we might take our last, second to last chord here, translate E into scale degree two, translate the second scale degree um, triad of a major key into an expected minor chord, or we could just listen to it and know that the two chord is, uh, the second degree chord is usually minor. And again, we know they're all root position. And that would make us translate, um, I guess in this last chord, a Roman numeral two that's lowercase with no extra information. Now that's the long way to do things. There's a much faster way. So what we can do is simply rely on our knowledge of um, what is expected as the diatonic chords to happen in D major. Those qualities always happen and these Roman numeral sizes always happen unless accidentals are changing them up. So I'm gonna get rid of those and simply translate our chord roots into Roman numerals. So we kind of have to juggle, you know, keep a couple of pieces of information in mind at the same time. You're certainly welcome to do that long way of the three pieces of information and boil them into a, symbol chord sim a single chord symbol, but this is faster. So going back to the beginning, we look at the first chord and say, we know it's a D chord. We say the root is scale degree one. It's going to be a Roman numeral one. The expected Roman numeral one at the top is big. And is there any extra information we have to include about inversion? And the answer is no. It simply is a root position one chord. The second chord is an A chord. That is a scale degree five. That means uh, big five appears at the top. That's the expected Roman numeral in this key. So we can simply say that this is an A chord, that it is a Roman numeral five. It is to symbolize A major in root position, and that's what it is. The third chord is the same as the first chord. It's a D chord in root position. That's Roman numeral one. The fourth chord, we're not even marking because it's the one carries through all the way into the next root at the beginning of measure five. An A chord in root position, well, we've seen that already. That's an A chord. Um, even though the notes change towards the end of the measure, um, no reason to change our symbols at all. The next downbeat is a D chord in root position, a one chord. We reach our E chord, and here that's scale degree two. So we said that that was expected to be um, scale degree two. Um, it's expected to be a minor chord, and we can say that it is an E chord, and E is in fact the bass note, it's in root position, so we can just use the regular rolled two, and the last chord is a Roman numeral five. And that's the full chordal analysis of this example. If we move on to the other version, things get a little more complicated. And this time I've left the non-chord tones in. It sounds like this this time, the bass note. Uh, first, I'll just play the outer voices. It's really nice. The bass has now actually found a way have a melody of its own, whereas in the original, you may recall, it just sort of left. It was just all stuck on A's and D's, but now it has a melody. The full example sounds like this. Now, something like that. I made a little mistake, but I'm going to keep going. Um, 
Here, we'll do the same procedure, but we'll actually see that the roots are a little different than expected. Um, we have our expected um, spectrum of chords in D major and their qualities. Um, that's not something I recommend that you write out. It's just I recommend you memorize and you always have it in mind, both for major and for minor. minor. We'll start and we know that we're in D major with a one chord. Now, as we trace the roots, this time they've changed. The second chord has an E, let me get my pen here. The second chord has an E below, a G, and the D has been marked as a non-chord tone. What's important to see about this chord is that even though it has an E in the bass, we might ask ourselves, hmm, there's an E in the bass. Is this an E chord? Is it an EGB chord? And the answer is no, there is, um, there's no B. It's E, G, there's no B. And we know that C sharp is a chord tone, so E is not really the right note to describe this chord. If we had to take this E note, this G note, and this C sharp note, the only way to structure them together is with the um, root of a C sharp. It's a C E G chord. C sharp E G are the only way to capture those three notes. So we have a different root than we've seen before. Going on to the third chord, we can play the same game. It's very important to look at the bass first and say, oh, okay, F sharp. Great, F sharp. I'm trying to indicate that note here. So that's the F sharp there. And to ask, is this an F sharp chord? Well, no, it isn't. It's not an F sharp, a C sharp chord. It actually has a D in it. The only way to capture this chord, the three notes of this chord in a stacked triad, is um, as D, F sharp, A. It's a D chord. And what I've done here, I'm, I've misremembered how I've uh, arranged my information. But if you go, what I did in the previous measure is to say a C-sharp chord, um, to backtrack what happened while you weren't looking. There was a C-sharp chord here. We know that's scale degree 7 in D major. So we can use the Roman numeral 7. And the other things to say is that it's a C-sharp that has an E in the base. So that 6 indicates that we didn't have it in root position. So this time I'll do root and then Roman numeral directly. So going back to our third chord, which is this one, we said that's a D chord. It is a D F sharp A chord. And that's scale degree one in the key. So we know it's a Roman numeral one. The only question is, is it in root position? Well, this one is in root position. This has an F sharp in the bass. It is in first inversion. That's a one six chord. If we move on to the fourth measure, finally, we have a D, and maybe can we finally say that we have a root position D chord? Yes, that is a nice D chord, Roman numeral one. Moving into the next measure, let's talk about what this root is going to be. We see a C sharp in the bass, so you might immediately think, well, maybe it's a C sharp chord, like before, C sharp E, G. This time, however, the three notes involved are not C sharp E and G, but rather there's an A present. So. The only letter that'll capture the C sharp, the A, and the E is A, it's an A chord. It uses the notes of an A chord. So if A is the root, that makes it scale degree five in the home key. We're gonna use a Roman numeral five. And we know this is, uh, if we compare the root A to the base note C sharp, they're not the same. We're dealing with a chord in inversion. The purpose of the music of this measure, or what happens in the bass line of this measure, is that the bass note changes halfway through. Right? So it starts on a C sharp in an A chord, but at the end of the measure, it's on a root A. So at the end of the measure, um, it's shifted from being an A chord in first inversion to an A chord in root position. The next downbeat, we've seen this chord before from the previous version. That's our D chord um, with a non chord tone above it, but once the F sharp arrives in the second beat. We know that we're dealing here with a nice one chord. And then the second to last chord of this example, um, G in the bass, is it a G chord? Hard to tell. <laughs> um, it would be safe to say that this is a G chord of some type. Um, the way that I've rewritten it, I think it'd be fair to say this is a big four chord. There's no information that indicates that it's not and then the next chord is an A chord five. So we'll leave it like that. The things that were interesting here is the, is the times in which we saw a bass note, we had to figure out the root, and then ask ourselves if it was in first inversion or not. 
So that is basically the procedure by which you would do a chordal analysis. It's a matter of establishing key first, then finding the roots, and then going and asking yourselves what scale degree is that root and does that agree with the baseline. And at the same time, you have to keep track of what are all the expected chord qualities. So it's very complicated, but that is the way it's done. And um, I recommend you go slowly and maybe watch this little tutorial again.